This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. THE ROCKET BOOK by Peter Newell THE BASEMENT When Fritz, the janitor's bad kid, went snooping in the basement, he found a rocket snugly hid beneath the window casement. He struck a match with one fell swoop. Then, on the concrete kneeling, he lit the rocket, and she, oop, it shot up through the ceiling. First Flat The Steiners on the floor above of breakfast were partaking. Crash! came the rocket unannounced, and set them all a-quaking. It smote a ketchup bottle, fair, and bang, the thing exploded. And now these people all declare, That ketchup flask was loaded! Second Flat Before the fire, old Grandpa Hop dozed in his armchair big, when from a trunk the rocket burst and carried off his wig. It passed so near his ancient head, he roused up with a start, and turning to his grandson said, You fellas think you're smart. Third Flat Algernon Brackett somewhat rash, had blown a monster bubble, when, oh, there came a blinding flash, precipitating trouble, but Algy turned in mild disgust, and called to Mama Brackett, Say, did you hear that bubble bust? It made an awful racket. Fourth Flat Joe Bud who'd bought a potted plant, was dousing it with water. He fancied this would make it grow, and Joseph loved to potter. Then, through the pot the rocket shot, and made the scene look sickly. Well now, said Joe, I never thought that plant would shoot so quickly. Fifth Flat Right here, tis needful to remark, that Dick and Little Son were playing with a Noah's Ark, and having loads of fun, when all at once that rocket, stout, up through the Ark came blazing. The animals were tossed about, and did some stunts amazing. Sixth Flat a burglar on the next floor up, the sideboard was exploring. The family, with the brindled pup, were still asleep and snoring. Just then, up through the silverware, the rocket thundered, flaring. Oh, the burglar got a dreadful scare, then out the door went tearing. Seventh Flat Miss Mamie Briggs, with no mean skill, was playing Casey's Fling, to please her cousin Amos Gill, who liked that sort of thing. When suddenly the rocket hot, the old piano jumbled. It stopped that ragtime like a shot, then through the ceiling rumbled. Eighth Flat up through the next floor on its way, that rocket dread went tearing, where Winkle stood in bathrobe gay, a tepid bath preparing. The tub, it punctured like a shot, and made a mighty splashing. The man was rooted to the spot. Then out the door went dashing. Ninth Flat Bob Brooks was puffing very hard, his football to inflate. 
while round him stood his faithful guard, and they could hardly wait. Then came the rocket, fierce and bright, and through the football rumbled. You've got a pair of lungs all right, his staring playmates grumbled. Tenth Flat The family dog, with frenzied mien, was chasing Fluff, the mouser, when, poof, the rocket flashed between, and quite astonished Towser. Now, if this dog had wit enough the English tongue to torture, he might have growled such silly stuff as, Ooh, that cat's a scorcher! Eleventh Flat While Carrie Cook sat with a book, the phonograph played sweetly. Then came the rocket, and it smashed that instrument completely. Fair Carrie promptly turned her head, attracted by the roar. Dear me, I never heard, she said, that record played before. Twelfth Flat De Vere was searching for a match to light a cigarette, but failed to find one with dispatch, which threw him in a pet. Just then the rocket flared up bright before his face and crackled, supplying him the needed light. <laughs> Thanks awfully, he cackled. Thirteenth Flat Home from the shop came Maud's new hat, a hat of monstrous size. It almost filled the tiny flat before her ravished eyes. When, shoo, up through the box so proud, the rocket flared and spluttered. <laughs> I said that hat was all too loud, her peevish husband muttered. Fourteenth flat. Tom's pap had helped him start his train, and all would have been fine had not the rocket raising cane blocked traffic on the line. It blew the engine into scrap, as in a fit of passion. Who would have thought that toy, said pap, would blow up in such fashion? Fifteenth flat. Orlando Pease, quite at his ease, the morning star was reading. My dear, said he to Mrs. Pease, here's a report worth heeding. The rocket then, in wanton sport, flashed through the printed pages. The lady gasped, a wild report, then swooned by easy stages. Sixteenth flat. Doc Danby was a stupid guy, so, lest he sleep too late, he placed a tattoo clock nearby to waken him at eight. But, ah, the rocket smote that clock and smashed its way clean through it. You have a fine alarm, said Doc, but, say, you overdo it. Seventeenth flat. A penny liner, Abram Stout, was writing a description. The flame shot up, he pounded out, then through a mild conniption, for through his Flemington there shied a rocket, hot and mystic. I didn't mean to be, he cried, so deuced realistic. Eighteenth flat. Gus Gummer long had set his head upon some strange invention. Be careful, Gus, his good wife said. It might explode. I mention just then the pesky rocket flared and wrecked that Yankee notion. I feared as much, his wife declared, then fainted from emotion. 
Nineteenth flat. While Bert was on his hobby horse and riding it like mad, the rocket on its fiery course upset the startled lad. <laughs> the frightened pony plunged a lot, like fury playing tag. Whoa, Spot, said Bert. Who would have thought you such a fiery nag? Twentieth flat. A taxidermist plied his trade upon a walrus's head. It really made him quite afraid to meet its stare so dread. When suddenly the rocket bright flared up and then was off. Oh, Minnie! cried the man in fright. Just hear that walrus cough. Top flat. Oh, it was just a splendid flight, that rocket's wild career. But to an end it came, all right, as you shall straightway hear. It plunged into a can of cream that Billy Bunk was freezing, and froze quite stiff, as it would seem, and so subsided. Wheezing. End of the Rocket Book by Peter Newell. Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox. Spring 2005.